first game of this series, Rays and the Blue Jays. Right now, let's go to the sartorial splendor that is Whit Watson. All right, Dwayne, thanks a lot. You talked about the success that Tampa Bay has had against Roy Halladay. A lot of reasons for that, good pitching, but also timely hitting. And one guy who's really had success against Halladay in particular is Carl Crawford, a 311 average against Halladay. Two home runs against him and 23 career hits. Now, when it comes to Crawford and the Jays, it's not just Halladay. He has been tearing up all of Toronto's pitching. A 364 average against the Jays since 2006. That is the best among active players. Crawford versus this is Halliday, one of the key matchups to watch tonight. Dwayne. All right, Whit, thank you very much. Here's a look at Carl Crawford. He'll be in his usual second spot when we get to the Rays lineup. First for the Toronto Blue Jays. They'll have Marco Scudero leading off. He's been so good in that leadoff spot for Cito Gaston this year, followed by Aaron Hill and Adam Lind. Lyle Overbay has been moved into the cleanup position, followed by Vernon Wells and Randy Ruiz, the DH. Edwin Encarnacion is at third with Rod Barajas behind the plate. And Joe England will be in right field hill at ninth. James Shields on the mound for the Rays tonight. He'll be making his 25th start of the year against Toronto, still looking for his first win, 0-1 with a 3-1-4 ERA. Did start the last long homestand against the New York Yankees. Was hoping to set the tone in that game. Ended up taking a loss in that 11-4 game. But tonight he's got a chance to set the tone again for a long homestand. Today's defensive alignment brought to you by Sweet Bay Supermarket. Where saving you money is our passion. B.J. Upton back in there after the off day in California. He's in center field flanked by Crawford and Gross. The infield Longoria, Bartlett, Zobers, and Pena. Greg's on second time behind the plate for Gene Shields. Here's Marco Scudero on the first pitch of this game. Is a strike call, a fastball, and we're underway tonight. Scudero is hitting 296. Still in the top 10 and runs scored. He is right in the middle of the top 10, fifth, with 80 runs scored this year. Another strike, nothing in two. As we've alluded to in our pregame comments with Zahn behind the plate starting the second time through with the rotation. And it's going to be really interesting to watch. Because given where the Rays are and their push to try to get to the postseason. There's not a big learning curve here. Things have to happen quickly as he acclimates himself to this pitching staff and this pitching staff to a veteran catcher. All of that's challenging, but it could be vastly rewarding if it all works out. That pitch is inside, 2-2. Really, Todd, what he has to do is establish almost an immediate credibility because he is a veteran catcher with what is still essentially a young starting rotation. 2 2 the count here to Scooter Row. And a base hit up the middle. That comes off a fastball. And Scooter Row is aboard. Well, Shields and Zahn had a lot of cases in their first time together in Seattle where Shields was shaking Zahn off. And I think tonight, Greg's going to try and take a little more control. Not only because he's learned James after this start, where he allowed those four runs, three of them earned in five and a third innings. Not only because he's learned James after one start, but. He obviously knows this Toronto team as well as anybody, having played with all, almost all of these guys at some point in his career. Yeah, that's the advantage of having a veteran catcher join your club. He has watched all of the Rays pitchers, particularly in the Eastern Division with Baltimore, wave and a miss. So he has an idea about these pitchers to begin with. And, of course, he knows a lot about every hitter in the American League because he's been around so long and he has been in the American League and inside the American League East so he has an advantage there. And what he hopes to do is establish a situation where these pitchers essentially don't have to think about the next pitch they're going to make. He's going to put down the pitch and put up the target and all they have to do is hit the target. That's the optimal situation if they can get to it. That's what he's hoping to accomplish. It may take two, three times through the rotation before he gets there. But I think you're going to see a different James Shields and Greg Zahn combo tonight. We'll see how many times he shakes him off than he did in Seattle. 
Scudero at first, two strikes to count to Hill. And he got him. He struck him out. Had him out in front. Hill disposed of on three pitches. That was a clinic, James Shields. You get a head 0-2, you throw that little change up, and usually it's got a hitter on the defensive when you're down on the count. And that's when he can pick up most of his strikeouts. One on with one out for Adam Lynn. Very tidy three pitch sequence there to Hill, and that was all Zahn and Shields not shaking him off at all. Lynn hitting 298. It's too low. Lynn 10th in the league in slugging percentage. He has spent a lot of time as the DH. He's in left field now. See recently swinging the bat well. He's been pretty consistent all year for the Blue Jays. High fly ball down the middle of the center field. BJ back to the track for it and he makes the catch. A couple of steps from the wall. And back to first base goes Scudero. BJ drifting on that fly ball back. You'll see a lot of center fielders get back quickly. He drifted on that one. They could fold him a little bit. That ball carried all the way to the wall, and Upton initially thought that it was going to be just about on the warding track. And so you see him there drift back, drift back, and now he's like, I got to pick it up a little bit. Watches where the wall is, and he's so good. Once he picks up that wall one time, he knows exactly how far he has. Two outs with Scudero still at first, and here's Lyle Overbay. Overbay hitting 268. And in the cleanup position now. There's a strike. A couple of hitters absent from this lineup in the Blue Jay lineup from the last time the Rays saw them. Scott Rowland for one. Alex Rios, another one. Is behind 0 2. It's going to be really interesting. We talked about how much Zahn wants to take over and allow his pitchers to think less out there. And Shields, I think, of all the starters, has the most conviction in certain counts what he wants to throw. So it'll be interesting to see how much control he does relinquish tonight. Down and in. One ball, two strikes. Scudero still at first after the leadoff single. There's Vernon Wells on deck. Rays have won seven of nine against Toronto this year. And 12 of the last 14 versus the Blue Jays here at Tropicana Field. One, two. There's a shot well hit to center field. Upton going back, and he will not get this one. That is gone. Overbay hits his 13th home run of the year, and it makes it a 2 0 ball game. Overbay hits 50 in the RBI department with that blast to center field. Well, that was a 1 2 pitch that had a lot of the plate. You can see it right there. Shields was not real thrilled as, he, as soon as that ball left the bat. He had a pretty good idea that was gone, and he actually called Greg Zahn out to the mound to discuss that pitch after it was hit. But that one two pitch had a lot of the plate, and Overbay's been doing a nice job since moving into that cleanup spot. Well, he got a pitch to hit location. The issue there is it came right back out over the plate, spinning up there. Vernon Wells, one ball, no strikes, the count. One and one. The count now, one ball, two strikes. It was almost as if he tried to cut that ball and it just stayed out over the plate. Two, two now, the count.
going to be wide. Three and two. Ground ball headed towards short. Picked up by Bartlett. The throw to first is in time. Couple of runs score on the home run. Rays coming in to hit. Gloria, Zobras, Pena, and Burl, then Gross, Zahn, and BJ Upton hitting ninth. Roy Doc Halliday already has more run support than he normally has against the Rays. Two runs. You can see what he has done this year. That 2.73 ERA, good for tied for second in the American League. Could be a Cy Young Award winner again in 09. 23rd start of the season for Halliday as he faces the Rays for the fourth time. And here's Bartlett, third leading hitter in the American League at 343. And the first pitch is a strike. Good to have you with us as you sit back and enjoy this telecast in high definition. Halliday delivers, and the pitch is outside. One and one. Good game for young pitchers to watch tonight. Halliday, Shields, watch how they work with the catchers. It's going to be wide. Two and one, a little slider out there from Roy Halliday. Race two and oh against Halliday this year. Count squares at two balls, two strikes, and Bartlett for his career is hitting. 318 off Halliday. And you see seven of his last 14 coming out of the series in Anaheim. Ground ball, first base side, backhanded over by Overbay, and the toss to Halliday's in time. A nice play by Overbay with Halliday getting there. Shot by Halliday on the quick cover after Overbay made the play. You're normally not thinking as a pitcher you're going to have to cover first with a right hand hitter, but Halliday was quick off the mound, and Overbay made a nice off balance throw, and Halliday got over there and hurt. One away for Carl Crawford. Another one of the Rays who's had some success against Halliday. Carl ninth in the league at hitting starting the night at 312. First pitch is a strike around the knees of fastball. Boy to beat Halliday you have to do a lot of things right. Get base run runners on be aggressive Crawford's usually very aggressive against him. Pitch is inside. One and one. And he's so good, Halliday is, at being around the plate. Hitters know that. So they try and 
get to him early in the count if they can. A little tap foul. How about this? He's walked only 21 men all year coming into this one in 165 innings. And five of those have been drawn by the Rays. <laughs> so against the rest of the league, he's walked only, what would that be, 16 men, I guess. Huh? 16 men and 19 starts. Chopper left side, shortstop scooter off, quick release, no chance and an infield hit for Crawford. Perfectly placed, and Crawford has a base hit. Take a look at the Toronto defense, which was shifted up the middle a little bit for Carl Crawford, more than we normally see. In the outfield for Toronto, Adam Lynn, Vernon Wells, Joe England plays it right, Edwin Encarnacion, Marco Scudero, Aaron Hill, Lyle over Bay Rod Barajas behind the plate for the Dr. Roy Halladay. That was a shift we don't normally see as today's defensive alignment review brought to you by Sweet Bay Supermarket, where saving you money is our passion. With Scudero, who was almost behind second there, they don't usually shift proper that much towards the middle. Here's Evan Longoria. Carl back in at first. Carl leads the league in steals with 53. Another move over as Halliday pays close attention to Carl Crawford. Pitch out and nothing doing. So Cito Gaston had the Blue Jays guessing there on the pitch out, but Carl not running. You wonder how Carl can have so much success against a guy like Halliday. He's one of those guys that induces a lot of ground balls this holiday and with Carl's speed he can beat out a lot of those grounders like he just did. It's going to be off the plate. To an O'Darrell Cousins is behind the plate tonight and he will make you throw a strike. So there's not going to be many pitches off the plate called strikes. You've definitely got to catch the plate for him to give up a strike. Especially that low strike it doesn't always call that low one around the knee so you're a hitter good news he says the strike zone is the strike zone and that's what he's calling pretty adamant about that and with that in mind Longoria is ahead in the count three and oh well, oh you get a guy like Carl Crawford on and even with Halliday's control Worry a little more about that guy at first base and get out of your normal rhythm in your delivery to home plate. Now Longoria is in a great count. There goes Crawford. Pitch is a strike and the throw is in time. Hill took the throw, put the tag on Crawford, who's caught stealing for the tenth time this year. And that's out number two. Oh, it's a great pitch to throw right on the outside corner. Barajas throws a perfect strike down the second base. Take a look at Crawford's jump. Not bad, but it was a perfect pitch for Barajas to throw. Liguori not swinging 3 0 at that outside pitch. Crawford thrown out. So now it's 3 and 1, the count to Longoria. And a chopper, third base side, Incarnacion with the throw to first, scooped over there by Overby and that retires the side. No runs a hit, caught stealing, and at the end of one, two nothing.
ending as we go to the second inning. And Randy Ruiz will lead off here. He is the DH and a chopper back by the mound. And that's going to go through into center field. That got in between Zobris and Bartlett. Even had they come up with it at that point, as it bounded behind the bag, I'm not sure they had any play at all. A little curious why Zobris didn't go after this, though. It looked like he backed off at the last second. I guess it was just by him, but you're right. The Ruiz doesn't run well. Zobris would have been running away from first base. It would have been a tough play. Probably would have been safe either way. So a leadoff single chopped up the middle. Now it's Incarnacion. Outside, he came over from the Cincinnati Reds. Takes a strike. One and one now. Shields touch for the two run homer by Overbay in the first. Foul ball. Curve ball right there. Takes the count to one and two. Strikeout for Shields. And Incarnacion out in front of the change. Follow the Rays all year by logging on to the Heater. That's the official baseball blog of the St. Petersburg Times. Every day, Rays beat writers Mark Topkin and Joe Smith bring you thoughtful insight, breaking news, predictions, and more only at TampaBay.com. Ruiz, the base runner, one out, and Rod Barajas will hit now. He's the eighth place hitter, their catcher. Pitch upstairs. He's hitting 241. He's hit 10 home runs this year for the Blue Jays. And when he swings, he swings like he means it. He does not get cheated up there. He had a couple of words for Greg Zahn, his former teammates last year with the Blue Jays. Probably were in a lot of pitcher catcher meetings together. That's a strike, one and one. And who's at the advantage here? <laughs> Zahn or Barajas? Because they should know each other so well, and Zahn figures out how to. Get him out. Barajas thinking, well, this guy's going to do this to try to get me out. It's probably the less you think, the better in this situation. Runner goes. The pitch is foul back. That's out of play. The count is one and two. The pitch cutting away a little bit from Barajas. I think that's the pitch that just didn't cut. Yep. That Overbay hit. Overbay's in a pretty good zone right now, too. You make a mistake to him, even if he's behind in the count. He was able to crush at the center field. Ground ball, foul. The count remains one and two. It's a little different look for the Blue Jays, and part of that is Overbay hitting cleanup. Ball and Barajas just missed an extra base hit. Shields just not quite finishing a couple of those breaking balls. I think he's having a little internal conversation with himself. He's 
hung a couple up in the zone. You talked about that cutter. There's a curveball, not bad, but it was a little higher than he wants. When he's ahead of the count, one and two, he wants to bury that pitch a little bit more. And a base hit slapped the other way. Up the second base goes Ruiz. So it'll be first and second here with one away. Joe England, the right fielder, is on his way to the plate. Join the 2010 season ticket priority list. You can do that to ensure yourself the best seats and get all the great benefits, such as postseason ticket opportunities and savings over single game tickets. Do that by calling 888 Fan Rays or visiting RaysBaseball.com. Here's England, the right fielder. He's working on a little six game hitting streak right now. That pitch coming in on him as he fouls it. Strike one. Meeting at the mound, there were a couple of extra meetings today for the Rays, including a players only meeting called before the game. I think the team realizes where things are right now, 48 games to go and nine game homestand, about as critical a time as you can get. Well, they're down to counting this one 48 games, 20 left with the Blue Jays and the Orioles, and it's critical that the Rays dominate those games. That's a fair ball by England headed for the corner. Ruiz scores. They're going to stop Barajas at third. It's a double for England, and now it's a three to nothing game as England picks up his second double of the year, extending his hitting streak to seven. Two guys doing damage against Shields that normally don't have success against them Barajas and England. England was just two for 17 against Shields before this pitch was right on the inner part of the plate and England turned on it and hit it just fair down the right field line scored Ruiz easily and Barajas they thought about sending him home but with one out put on the stop sign. You know we're talking about that outing for Shields against Seattle. He gave up four runs in five and a third three of those runs were earned and the Rays won that game ten to four. Shields got the win as Scooter fouls it. And you know, it occurs to me that it wasn't so much pitch selection as it was location for Shields mm -hmm. that really hurt him in that outing, even though he came out of it with a win and the Rays, with their run support, won the game. And, and we've seen him early here in the first couple of innings struggle with location again tonight. He is not hitting his spots, and Shields is a guy that has to be on. He has to be able to hit the catcher's mitt, and he's had a couple pitches that have gotten away from him early. And against Roy Halladay, three runs already is more than he's had in support in any of his three previous starts against the Rays. Infield close. Pitch up. One and one. He might not know what to uh, what to do <laughs> with a lead like this. The Rays wouldn't have minded if he ended up in Philadelphia, but as it turns out, a lot of people had the Rogers Center thought that was their farewell to Roy Halladay and it wasn't. My ball right center field throws closing to make the catch tag at third Barajas is going to score the throw will hold England at second and a sacrifice fly by Scudero makes it four to nothing. Throws into right center to corral that one but a run scores. So a two run first and a two run second. Here's Aaron Hill. Shields got Hill on a changeup. Three pitches and struck him out the first time. He fouls a fastball here. Strike one. Ruiz and Barajas have scored the runs. It's 
foul. 0 2. It's the Rays with uh, 11 against Baltimore, 9 against Toronto. And if, if they can make the most of that part of their schedule, they have a chance to go face to face with Boston and Texas. They have six left with both the Red Sox and the Rangers. Well, the schedule's there for the Rays. At some point, if they're going to make the playoffs, they have to get on a run, which they've been searching for all year. Too low. One ball, two strikes. Right now, they're four back of Boston and three and a half back of Texas. Those are the two teams they're chasing for the wild card. So there's plenty of time to do it. There will be opportunity to go head and head, but you're right, Todd. They're going to have to get on a hot streak. And a lot of people think this club is certainly good enough to do that and do. Only time will let us know. Well, last time they had the situation where the Yankees were playing the Red Sox when they were in Seattle, and now they have the two teams that. They're chasing in the wild card going head to head in Boston and Texas. There's a fly ball towards center, and Upton is there to make the catch. Hill reaching for that breaking pitch. Two run score. We go to the bottom of the inning. 4 0 Toronto. We're in, we're in position to do this on our own, and I and I really believe. If you look at the uh, this entire year, there's times we've shown signs of coming out of this and really being the team we're capable of, and then we slip back. It's about time we become the team the team we're capable of becoming. Joe Madden talking about the urgency for the Rays as they hit the home stretch. Whit Watson back with you on Fox Sports Florida about that players only meeting. Madden asked before the game, are you bothered by that? He said, not at all. I'm sure something positive came out of it. Madden also asked, would you have liked to have been there? He said, no. Also asked, do you know what they talked about? And he said, no, but that's okay. He's very much in favor, he says, of the players taking matters into their own hands when it's time to do so. Dwayne? All right, Ben Zobras leading off the bottom of the second with a count one and one. That's down two and one, and that's not all all that uh, unusual for a club in the raised position to on occasion have a meeting involving just the players. It's foul ball, and it's two and two, and it's interesting, Todd. I mean, you see some managers who are a little uneasy about that but I, I've never understood why they would be because it really tells me that the players are willing to take responsibility for what's going on inside three and two and, and Madden has no problem with that no he shouldn't either and, and he doesn't he lets the players run the clubhouse and he obviously 
picks his spots where he needs to say something. But for the most part, he likes when the guys take control themselves. You just wish they might have picked a better day other than Halliday on the mound. <laughs> <laughs> A foul ball. <laughs> well, I guess they don't want to stack the deck in their favor. <laughs> you know, if they're going to have a meeting, let's let's man up and do it against Halliday. There you go. So, no, but it's a good thing. I think the flight home from the West Coast gave the players a chance to really think about things and where they stood. Three, two, high fly ball. Under it though, and Wells will be there in center field to make the catch. One away. Talking about seven weeks from Sunday being the last game of the regular season and you know it's time to get things done now. This is a team that last year when they were in the World Series felt like well we'll get back again and it's never that easy but when you're young sometimes you think so and I think this year's team felt like well at some point we'll get on a run but here it is 48 games to go and at some point has to be now. Well I, you know it's interesting we've talked about Zahn and, and his perspective behind the plate and I, I think it's a great addition to the club but you know he also saw this team from across the diamond last year and I think his uh, his evaluation of the club and how they got where they did uh, is important as well and I mean, he fully understands uh, you're on a winning club you've got number one you've got talent you've got ability but you also get emotion involved as well as it's a break here and there, but you ride that whole train to the postseason as the Rays did all the way to the World Series. So it was an excellent team. Things happened to help you roll. And, and now I, I think what he observed about the pitching staff, but you, you could say this about the lineup as well. We talk about it being a game of adjustments. There's a long drive, but well fouled, and boy is. Pena hitting the ball a long way recently. But you can't go out and do the same things that you did. There has to be a little alteration because they've, they've been around long enough now that other clubs and other lineups in regard to the pitching, they know how the pitchers work. They know what they have. And he's a proponent of if you have four pitches, you know, you might not need to use all four of them in a particular outing. You might get by with two or three of them and save something, show them a different look, three and one. But they're not going to be able to do exactly the same thing they did last year in sequencing the pitches, for an example, and get the same results. Three one to count. That's focus right there. Huh? He just felt it. <laughs> Oh, bug crawling around his head. Three one and a high fly ball again. Wells will be there. Almost the same spot as the fly ball by Zobris. Two outs. If you happen to be traveling and can't watch the Rays, you can always catch the games on your computer with MLB.tv, the ultimate baseball experience. A hundred out of market games. Per week live on your computer and the games you miss, well, you can catch those on demand. For details, just visit RaysBaseball.com. That's where baseball is always on. There's Pat Burrow. Swinging and missing. Strike one. Taking that a step further, Dwayne, last year was a very special year. And so many things went well for the Rays, especially those one-run wins and comfort behind wins that just aren't quite there this year. And when you get that feeling that you had last year, it wasn't just the confidence, it was the belief that no matter what the score was, if it was close late in the game, they were going to win. The same things haven't been happening this year, and for them to get on a run, that, that has to change. It's a foul ball. Well, I'll tell you, a team that, and of course, they just swept the Rays, but that team at Anaheim, that's a pretty good team. And I don't think I've seen a club have better at bats up and down the lineup than they're having right now. Two strikes still to Pat Burrell and the Rays have had a difficult time of emulating what the Angels are doing now and what they did last year with their lineup because the Rays last year consistently up and down the lineup got just great at bats. And they've had they've had runs here where they've had pretty good at bats. 
I just don't think they've had everybody in the lineup at the same time over a sustained period having those great at bats. You're right, and I think sometimes it's skewed when you look at the total run score because the Rays are in the top five in the AL, but a lot of those come from double digit games. They haven't had that consistent run support all season long, especially when James Shields is on the mound. We're in the bottom of the second here with the Blue Jays scoring two in the first and two in the second. Wide. Two and two now. I like what Joe Madden said though on his way out of Anaheim to one of the groundskeepers. He always likes to visualize things and he said, I'll be back here in a couple months. We'll be standing on that visitor's line. Thinking the Angels might make the playoffs. And certainly he can visualize the Rays there too. Strike three call to Burrow. Fastball on the outside corner. One, two, three, and we're through two with the score. Four nothing Toronto. chance to cheer where they can hear you upgrade your Rays baseball experience by winning premium seats right next to the action. High fly ball off the bat of Adam Lynn all the way to the wall and beyond a home run for Adam Lynn on the first pitch here in the third and that will make it five to nothing. Adam Lynn hitting his 24th home run of the year the second home run given up tonight by Shields. Highly unusual for Shields to have this kind of night at home. He was out there in a hurry getting ready for this inning, and this pitch is on the inner half of the plate. A little cutter, and Adam Lynn just put a nice stroke on that. Got a row too deep over the right field wall. Pitch to Overbay, who hit the home run in the first. That's away, a fastball, 1 0. Too low, 2 and 0. Oh. Oh, this is an aggressive Toronto team, Dwayne, and that can sometimes work in Shields' benefit when he gets ahead of the count, but he's been ahead of the count a couple of times and they still picked up base hits. 2 and 1. The location has been a problem for James tonight. Over Bay ahead in the count, two and one. Off the plate in. Is that a young Muhammad Ali look like? Randy Ruiz has a little bit Boy, of that. You're right. That old champion look. Maybe the Cassius Clay days. Full count.
Five runs, six hits. Two of those hits, home runs, another one a double. And it's popped up, short center. Upton coming in, he's there. One away. Not the start that Shields would have hoped for. He's obviously frustrated out there, been working quickly. And he really wanted to set the tone of this homestand. It's really, other than Neiman, as Joe Madden told us before the game, it really hasn't been a good turn through the rotation for anybody. And James is hoping to pick things up here to start this homestand. First pitch, there's a strike to Vernon Wells. Jeff Neiman. It's five and a third Wednesday. Did not figure in the decision. One and one now to Wells. And his line Wednesday doesn't look very good, but if, if you play solid defense behind him, that could easily have been a six inning one run game for him. Pop foul, that's going to be back. And out of play it goes, so it's now one and two. Well, he was victimized by that ball. In the fourth inning, the Napoli hit that should have been caught, and that it, uh, it won as a triple. We're talking about that not only yesterday, but some of us before the game. And you know, time after time, uh, there are writers who are you know get together for their meetings, and they they do petition the league from time to time. They're the base hit up the right side. Gross over to make the pickup, and Wells is going to stop it first with a single. A one out single. They do petition the league baseball to to change that into a an actual concept of a team error and so far it consistently falls on deaf ear or deaf ears but the Rays uh, have had a couple of occasions where a ball could have been ruled a team error and not penalize a pitcher who right. makes a pitch and should get an out. I like that concept. And that was a great example of a team error. Carl Crawford never took charge of the ball. It's hard to give him the error, but he's got to take charge of that ball. And Jason Bartlett never saw it in the sun. By the time Crawford looked up after he realized Bartlett didn't have it, it was too late. That would be an easy team error and really more justified for Neiman's line in terms of burned runs. Well, I just, it, it, it's hard to see uh, the reason behind a situation where. If, if a fielder stands his position and a ball falls behind him or in front of him or the either side, a ball with ordinary effort that should be caught, how a pitcher can be penalized for that. And you never knew whether Crawford lost it or not because he never really looked up for it. He just looked at Bartlett, assuming Bartlett had it, when really it should have been Carl's play. And you know, even a ball that's lost in the sun, I mean, you shouldn't. You shouldn't uh, penalize a pitcher, or in those cases, a fielder for that. It'd be another great team error. reason for a team error. Wave and a miss. Ruiz chased that one, so he's out on strikes. Third strikeout for Shields. Two outs here in the third. And don't forget, tomorrow the Rays Summer Concert Series presented by Hess Express continues. Rays and the Blue Jays on Sci Fi Night. After the game, the B 52s will perform the post game concert. It's free. Visit RaysBaseball.com to get your tickets. Encarnacion hits a fly ball to right, caught by Gross, and then retires the side. Bottom of the third coming, 5 0 Toronto.
Inside the Rays, the art of managing behind the scenes with Joe Madden. His approach to the job, you'll hear from Madden himself as well as his coaches and players. It's a unique look behind the scenes with a major league manager. Inside the Rays, the art of managing debuts tonight after our Rays Live postgame coverage, and that's right here on Fox Sports Florida. Dwayne? Good. Thank you very much, and you're right. You don't want to miss that, so stay with us right after coverage of our game here for the latest edition of Inside the Rays and you'll get a look at what Joe Madden does. Line drive and it's caught by the shortstop Scudero. Gross hit the ball hard. He was hitting the ball hard in Anaheim. Lines to the shortstop this time. Lead off hitter down five nothing against Doc Halliday. You need these to find a space, and instead it just kind of slices right into the glove of Marco Scudero. Tough luck for Gabe Gross, who picked on a pitch early in the count, hit it hard, but the shortstop was there. Well, here's Greg Zahn, and this one hits him. Zahn hit by the pitch. Mm, boy. And you could hear it all the way up here. He is hurting. I think Halliday's talking with uh, Cousins, thinking that maybe it's a foul ball. But uh, Zahn would beg to differ. Zahn wanted to. It's actually Gabe Gross here hitting the line drive, but Zahn's actually one of those guys that doesn't wear the batting gloves. And let's listen to this. Son thought, you know what, Doc? I caught you all those years. You were my buddy. <laughs> what happened? You got him just on the uh, meat part of the hand there. You can see where he's kind of favoring that right hand a little bit right below the pinky. Uh, we'll see how that affects him as the game progresses. So he's hit by a pitch. Navarro is going to start to get loose. And the pitch to BJ Upton is a strike. You have to think that getting hit on the hand like that will have a, a very negative effect on Zahn. So yeah. Navi was loosening just in case. It is his throwing hand, too. Got him on the right hand there. Not that a, that a batting glove is going to help in, in that situation, but he is one of the few players that. Alex to just go with the bare hand grip on the bat. One on one out two strikes the count to Upton. And he takes a pitch close. One ball two strikes. DJ right now hitting 235. He taps one third base side. Infernacion cannot make the play. That'll be an infield hit. Zod up to second. Up to the board on the infield hit. Well, still early. The race going against one of, if not the league's best, down five. You got to start somewhere. It throws it. Hit that line drive anywhere but at Marco Scudero. The Rays could have the bases loaded, no outs. That was not a hard hit ball, so now the Rays are even. But Upton found a spot there down the third baseline with his speed. He was able to beat it out. Hopefully, that could be the start of something good for BJ Upton, who's been struggling as of late. Well, Bartlett is about as hot a hitter as you can find. And if the Rays are to start chipping away at the deficit, it would seem he's a good guy to have up there. Fouls the first one. That's a strike. And you know, in a lot of cases, if you get down, you'll start looking at some pitches, trying to come up with some base runners. But against Halliday, if you look too much, all you're going to do is get behind in the count. 14 pitches an inning is all he averages. And a lot of opponents swing at that first pitch. It's up the right side. Foul. Bouncing beyond the bullpen and out of play. Nothing in two. 
You know when a guy's always around the zone, especially when he gets into a situation where he's ahead in the game 5 nothing, like Halliday is, and now he gets runners on first and second. Bartlett is watching how he's attacking hitters, and he knew his best pitch in the sequence might be the first pitch he sees. A two strike count. Bartlett stays alive right there. That breaking ball. And Bartlett just flipped it foul. Jason came into the game hitting 393 out of the leadoff spot. 343 overall to start the game. And a one hopper to second hill to Scooter a one first base two. Bartlett hustling down the line called out down there on a 4 6 3 double player. Braves leave a man do not score through three five nothing Blue Jays. Sunday's a family fun day presented from the St. Petersburg Times. Get a ticket, Pepsi product and snack starting at just $18. This Sunday, the Rays take on the Blue Jays and the first 10,000 youngsters, 14 and under, receive a Boss Man Junior visor presented by T.G. Lee Dairy. Call 888-FAN-RAYS or visit RaysBaseball.com to get your tickets. Jason Bartley really hustled trying to beat that double play, and he may have beaten it. Your first inclination as a hitter when you hit a bullet right at somebody is to get frustrated. But Bartlett sees he hits a bullet right at somebody, and he just picks it up and goes. And let's see where he is. Oh, yeah. He's on the bag right there. And there's the play. You know, a, a line drive like that, sometimes as an umpire, you don't try to, but you almost anticipate a double play because not many guys are going to beat that out. But, Dwayne, it looks like Bartlett certainly did. Yeah, he absolutely beat that out. There's not a lot of guys, no matter how fast they are, that beat that out because you have to run hard as soon as you hit a line drive at somebody, which, which is against a lot of guys' nature. They get frustrated. Yeah, plus he's running from the right side of the plate. First pitch to Barajas is popped up. Right side, foul ball, and that's Carlos Pena to make the catch. One away. It's fun to watch Bartlett play on a regular basis. He just, he's one of those guys he loved to emulate. He plays the game so hard. Yeah, that's why you, I mean, you'd like to see Hustle rewarded there. Yes. If a guy beats it out, he, he's beating it out, and he, he should not be called out <laughs> because of that hustle. As soon as that ball was hit, everybody assumed it was a double play. Unfortunately, I think Adrian Johnson did too. Yep, I think you're right. Joe England hitting a fly ball into center. Upton is there. 
Well, two up and two down. Two pitches into the fourth inning. We better get the trivia question in. Aflac, we've got you under our wing. Aflac. Tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who would be the Blue Jays all time winningest pitcher? All time winningest pitcher for the Blue Jays. How many pitches do you think Scooter is going to take here? <laughs> At least two. He'll take, yeah. He's got to take a couple. It's been a two pitch inning with two outs so far. And he takes a strike. He's normally a guy that goes deep into the counts no matter what. But he obviously knows the situation, knows Halliday's only been in there for a few seconds. One ball, one strike. Shields threw him a breaking ball there. Two and one. Bad the Rays couldn't get to Halliday a little bit in that third inning. Gabe Rose a line drive, Jason Bartlett a line drive. The line drive to center, charged by BJ. He got it. Upton charging that one straight ahead. Come again, made the catch. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. Five nothing Toronto. Our Aflac trivia question Who would be the Blue Jays winningest all time pitcher? Dave Steeb with 175 victories. Roy Halliday comes next with 143. Here's Carl Crawford. He takes a first pitch curveball. That's a strike. One and one. You would think that record's going to be safe. Halliday looks like he's got at least this year, maybe part of next year. That Headed into left center field. That's going to be in there. Extra bases. Two hops and two to the wall. Crawford's going to stop at second with a double. So a two base hit. The 20th of the year for Carl and. Perhaps that's the spark the Rays are looking for. Some encouraging signs from the Rays the last couple of innings. Gabe Gross, a line drive. Jason Bartlett hit into a line drive double play, unfortunately. And now Crawford hits one in the gap in left center field. So some pretty good swings off of Halliday the last couple of innings. Well, they need a hit or two and a blast to get back into this thing. Evan Longoria grounded out his first time. 
Evan with 24 home runs on the year. There's a base hit into left field. Crawford had to wait as he tried to read that one. Wasn't sure if it would be caught or not. So he waited for it to go through. Two hits. Well, the approach from the Rays is to be aggressive early in the count. You see Crawford freeze on that line drive from his perspective. It was tough to see if that was going to get through. But it was easily through for Longo. Hit the ball sharply between short and third. So, really, you look, look back at the last six hitters and a base hit, a hit batsman, two hits this inning, and the only time he's recorded outs have been on hard hit line drives by Gross and Barlow. Now it's Ben Zobrist. First two men aboard. Ben lifted the ball to center his first time. And he pops it up this time, going after a first pitch fastball. And that ball is back fair as Encarnacion makes the catch at third. Well, they got a fastball, but popped it up. Same approach out of Zobris that we've seen lately, and that's aggressive early in the count. Thought he had a pitch to drive there, but got under it. Now Carlos Pena. You can see Ben in the dugout. He really thought he had a pitch to hit right there. You know against Halliday you're not going to get a whole lot of opportunities. So the Rays desperately need to get at least one here this inning. Pena got under one. In the second inning a 3-1 pitch and skied it to center field. Down and in. Go back to the game day before yesterday. In Anaheim when he homered in the fourth. And then again in the sixth inning. 31 home runs leading the American League. And he fouls it. Ball one strike so. A couple of pitches with wrinkles in them here this time. They're trying to keep Carlos off balance with breaking balls in on his hands. Pena is a streaky home run hitter. And he's in one of those zones right now. Five home runs in his last six games. He hope it carries over into the homestand. Down and in. Two and one. Halliday, everything in, in, in on Pena in this at bat, not wanting to, him to extend, maybe trying to get him to ground into a double play, but Pena's thinking about trying to drive a ball somewhere. They're playing as deep as he possibly can in the outfield, especially in left field. Adam Lynn's almost on the warning track. And he's way over toward left center, the infield, of course, employing the ship. And a tap foul, he misses the count at two and two, a breaking pitch. I don't think I've seen a left fielder play that close to the warning track. I mean, he's literally three steps in front of the warning track and left. Ball won't go over his head unless it leaves the stadium. Or at least, at least it gets over the yellow line and left. Two two, the count to Pena. So two big outs after the double and the single stayed with the breaking stuff to get Pena. Second strikeout posted by Halliday. Well, here's that curveball or is like a little slur had a little bite to it down and over and I think started on the outside corner of the plate and ended up below the bat of Carlos Pena in on his hands. Halliday gets first and third nobody out and now he gets a pop up and a strikeout. Here's Pat Burrell. Starts him with a pitch off the plate. Breaking ball. 1-0. He got Burrell looking in the second inning on a pitch that actually might have been outside. Which is surprising with Daryl Cousins back there. 
And another pitch out there, and this time it's called the ball. 2 0. Cousins will absolutely make a pitcher be on the corner in most cases. This could be a pitch for Pat to sit on. You know, Halliday doesn't want to fall behind 3 0. And he fouls it the other way. Kept the fastball away from him. Rose had a good at bat against him last time, and he's on deck. And with Halliday's control, New Burrow could probably zone up a pitch there just a little bit on the outside part of the play. This guy's so good, the Rays really need to try and take advantage of their first and third no out situation to start of this inning. 2 1. And it's fouled back again. Fastball. 2 and 2. Rays have four hits. Crawford has two of them. He's at third now. Longoria is at first. Two outs. And a swing and a miss as Burrow went outside the strike zone after that fastball. He's out on strikes. Through four, five. Blue Jays leading 5 nothing into the fifth inning. Aaron Hill, Adam Lind, Lyle Overbay as James Shields delivers the first pitch of the fifth inning inside for ball one. Hill is struck out on a changeup. One of three strikeouts for Shields. Also fly to center. Not a great cut at that pitch. It's one ball and one strike. Two runs for the Blue Jays in the first, two runs for the Blue Jays in the second, and one in the third. The Rays have threatened against Roy Halladay the last couple of innings, but nothing to show for it. Shields working with Greg's on for the second time. Back to back starts. They also work together in Seattle. One ball and two strikes. You know, Shields tries to be calm and collected out there, but sometimes his body language betrays his frustration. Yep. You can see it on the first pitch of this inning when he missed the hill. You know, the hands two and two. He's not as easy to read as Garza, but he's he does show that body language where you can kind of tell what's going through his head and how he's feeling emotionally. Garza is a little more demonstrative at times. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Chop foul. And Joe Madden felt like Greg Zong would also help in those situations as well. There is Garza. He'll get the start on Sunday. 
wrap up of this weekend series. Scott Casimir goes tomorrow for the Rays. Are trying to bounce back after a tough outing in Anaheim. Here's the 2 2 pitch to Hill. Back up the middle, past Shields. Zobris has it in time for the out. For a limited time, you can get your very own All Star jersey autographed by a Rays All Star only through HSN. Visit hsn.com backslash All Stars or call 1 800 284 3100 to purchase your authentic autographed jersey. Here's Adam Lind. He had a home run his last time up. First pitch he saw in the third inning. Takes a strike, nothing and one. For Lind, it was home run number 24 on the year. Very solid hitter. Right, the Blue Jays are going to hope to build around as they really have made a lot of adjustments over the course of this season. Trading Scott Rowland at the deadline. Allowing Alex Rios to be picked up on waivers by the White Sox and releasing their closer at one point, BJ Ryan. 1 1 pitch is popped high in the air. Long run for Pena, and he's running out of room and into the crowd. But the one guy everybody thought might be with a different team is still here in Toronto's dugout, and pitching tonight, Roy Halliday. There he is. Doc Halliday facing the Rays for the fourth time this year and all since late June as the Rays and the Jays play a bunch of times in June, July, and August. Top foul at the plate. Stays one and two on Adam Lind. Only did Halliday face the Rays three times in the span of four weeks, but he also started a game for Joe Matt during that time. Yeah, that's right. Part of the All-Star game in St. Louis. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number four for James Shields. It's a tough customer and Adam Lynn chasing a fastball. There's two away. Well, one, two. Lynn may have been looking tough to look for anything but a fastball. But against Shields down one, two, you could look for the change. Shields got him to chase a fastball up out of the strike zone. So Shields now has retired seven in a row after a single by Vernon Wells. Here's Lyle Overbay, and he fouls the pitch away. Overbay got things going for Toronto in the first inning with a two-run home run to straightaway center field with two outs on a one-two pitch. He's one for two tonight. Shields ahead, nothing in two. You know, there's the pitch he really wanted to throw to Overbay in the first inning. That was a great pitch that moved in on his hands instead of the one that stayed out over the plate and he hit it out for the home run. Top foul stays 0-2. He left that cutter over the plate in the first inning. It cost him two runs. Shields has been working ahead of almost every hitter the last time through the lineup. 0-2 pitch. Just misses the outside corner. One and two. You'll see Shields do that too. And here's another look at that last pitch. Just stayed a little bit wide. Swing and a miss. Shields get, gets over base. Swinging two strikeouts in the inning. Five in the game. We're into the bottom of the fifth. It's 5 nothing Toronto.
And it was Joe England with his double down the right field line to score Randy Ruiz. That made it 3-0 after a sack fly. Made it 4-0. Adam Lind led off the third to make it 5-0 Jays. That's where we stand in our game summary. Roy Halladay. Who had a total of five runs to work with in his three previous starts against Tampa Bay with five runs tonight in the first three innings. So far, he has only allowed four hits to the race. He's hit a batter. Two of those four hits have been of the infield variety. Here's Gabe Gross. He hit the ball very hard his last time up. Unfortunately, it was right at the shortstop, Marco Scudero. Start to bottom of the fifth with the Rays trailing 5 0 in a daunting task against. A guy who's certainly going to be a candidate for the American League Cy Young Award, you would think. Roy Doc Holliday. Inside on Gross 2 0. Gross breaks on. BJ Upton, bottom third of the order, due up for the Rays here in the fifth. Zahn seems to be okay after being hit by a pitch on his throwing hand his first time up. Two pitch grounded towards the hole. Overbay will throw to Halliday covering. And there's one out here in the fifth. Hey, Rays fans, jump into the action of your favorite movies and TV shows at Universal Studios. Experience thrills and challenge all of your senses at Universal's Islands of Adventure. And coming soon, you can take your music for a ride on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. It's all brought to you by Universal Orlando Resort. Be sure to log on to SunSportsTV.com. For a chance to win the holiday rip ride rocket sweepstakes. Greg Zahn, the hitter. His former battery mate, Roy Halliday, hit him with a pitch the first time up, and now he delivers a strike on the inside corner. Another strike on the inside corner, and Zahn's thinking. I don't remember that pitch being a strike for Shields. Nothing in two. Greg Zahn getting the start tonight against the righty Roy Halliday. More than likely, Joe Madden will go back to Deonor Navarro for the next two starts. As the Jays will face, as the Rays will face a couple of lefties from the Jays on Saturday and Sunday. That seems to be the plan, at least for now. Zahn starting against righties. Navarro starting against lefties on hits better as a left-hand hitter Navarro been hitting better as a right-hand hitter Halliday ahead 0-2 Could not get Zahn to chase that breaking ball one ball and two strikes You know Zahn has the second highest on base percentage of any catcher offensively behind Joe Maurer and He's a guy who considers himself a good hitter, but he considers himself a catcher first, and that's a great message. For, I think for any any catcher, because his primary responsibility is behind the plate. And even though you have pride in your offense, as Zahn does, as any catcher should, but it's that catching side of the game that's most important to him. Well, he's been around the game long enough to realize with seven weeks to go, he can make a little bit of an impact offensively. He hit here and there, put the ball out of the yard. But the way he can make his biggest impact with this team in the final seven weeks plus is defensively. It's Upton grounds one to second on the first pitch. Roy Halladay has a one, two, three, fifth inning. We are through five here. Chop Canna Field. It's five nothing Jays.
Time for What Do You Know, brought to you by Radio Shack. Did you know that Greg Zahn's mom, Sherry, was a pro golfer and the women's coach at Southern Cal? So his uncle is Rick Dempsey, who caught 24 years in the major leagues, was an Orioles coach, now a broadcaster. What do you know about Greg Zahn? He also has an uncle, another uncle, who played in the minor leagues for 11 years, and now is one of the senior long drive champions. So, an athletic family, mm -hmm. baseball, golf. And, and he'd like to play as absolutely as long as he could. Yeah, how about that article today? Talking about, he, he wants to be like Julio Franco, huh? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> the catching version of Julio Franco. 1-1 one, one, the count. Popped in the air. Vernon Wells foul territory. Carlos Pena will have a play on Wells pop-up. This is so good at those pop-ups. Staying with it till the last minute. One away here in the sixth. Nine in a row sent down by James Shield. He'd also do some broadcasting work. Yeah. So. For the up in Toronto, right? Mm -hmm. For uh, the Rogers Network. He does a little postseason coverage. He's hoping this year to avoid that work if he gets into the postseason with the race yeah he'd prefer to be covered as opposed to <laughs> cover as opposed to analyzing I like his new gear though he's got all the stylish new catching gear in the race colors he's always been one of the catchers on the cutting edge of equipment has those customized pads and helmet and the the cage you know there's a little change in that because before it was more metallic and he's got the uh, the blue on that Much better than he had to deal with the, his first start with James Shields as Randy Ruiz flies out to right. Zahn's first start with Shields, he had just arrived. He called over to the Seattle clubhouse for some shoes because he had the Orioles shoes with him and found some shoes from Jose Lopez. Those didn't go well. It changed shoes in the middle of the game, went back to his Orioles shoes. They just spray painted over the orange. So he was kind of using the Salvation Army gear just trying to find stuff that would fit him. <laughs> And it worked out for him, but he was not very comfortable at the end of that night. Turned out to be a win for the Rays, though. They're only one on the road trip. One and one to count to Edwin Encarnacion. Now, Shields has done this before, where he struggles early in the game, and then he kind of gets in lockdown mode. That's where he is now with 10 straight as he delivers to Encarnacion low. It's two and one. James is working very quickly, getting the sign and going, rarely shaking off Zahn the entire night. See him get on the mound, he'll get the sign, and he'll go. That's a strike on the outer part of the plate, three and two the count. Two outs, nobody on. Raise down five, nothing. But Shields trying to give them a chance to come back. In the air to right field, Gabe Gross barely has to move, and that's now 11 in a row, sent down by Shields. We head to the bottom half of the sixth inning, 5 nothing Toronto.
Bottom half of the sixth inning, 5 nothing in favor of Toronto. The Rays will have the top of the order as Jason Bartlett will lead things off. Roy Halliday so far, four hits allowed. He's retired six in a row. He's hit a batter, not walked a batter tonight. And his first pitch of the sixth inning is a strike. Pitch number 68 on the evening, so not unusual, but his pitch counts in good order here for Toronto. That pitch misses low for a ball, one and one. Bartlett has grounded out to first base on a nice cover by Roy Halladay and then grounded into a double play where he was really hustling and actually beat the relay throw that was called out. And with Carl Crawford hitting so well in his career against Halladay, who knows what that could have led to for the Rays in that inning. As it turns out, that was an inning ending double play, unfortunately. Halladay, 25 strikes to 25. Ball so far, 370 pitches. One and two, the count on Bartlett. Takes him off the plate, two and two. Halliday does that as well as anybody, too. He's able to use that area inside on righties, inside on lefties to get their feet moving a little bit when he's ahead of the count. It's fun to watch when you have a pitcher with the kind of command that Halliday has, and you have a hitter like Bartlett, who is waiting as long as he is and is swinging the bat as well as he is. It's a great battle up here between these two guys. Bartlett stays alive, fouling it away. Two balls, two strikes. Bottom half of the sixth inning, Rays looking for a rally. Thought they had something going in the fourth, first and third, nobody out. But Halliday induced a pop up from Ben Zobris, struck out Carlos Peña and Pat Burrell to end the fourth. Here's the 2 2 pitch to Jason away, and a good at bat here for Bartlett. Counts now full. Yeah, he fell behind, and here it is. He fouled off a couple of pitches and has worked a full count. There's a guy on deck who has two of the four hits tonight, Carl Crawford. Swing and a miss. Halliday gets Bartlett on strikes. Good battle won by the Jays ace. One out here in the sixth. Strikeout number five for Halliday. Let's take a look at that pitch. This could be the perfect 3 2 pitch. Look at this. That ball cutting away from the plate. You can tell after Bartlett missed that pitch, he just kind of looked out at Halliday saying, That's pretty nasty. He battled him. And Halliday won that battle, but it was a fun one-on-one -on -one battle to watch. Here is Crawford lacing one to right field. England has it go over his head. Crawford on his way to second base, and he's thinking three. Carl Crawford getting all the way to third base with one out. That ball was hit so hard that it surprised England. It went over his head, and then he bobbled the ball. On the warning track out there, and Carl saw that and headed to third. They're going to give him a triple all the way. He hit a breaking ball over England's head. And then the bobble. Carl's in with his seventh triple. Nice heads up base running by Crawford, too, to notice that bobble and just turn it on. He went from first to third. About as quick as you'll ever see anybody. He just absolutely flew around second. Here's Longoria. They're going to call strike. Nothing in one. Now a single for Crawford, a double, and a triple for Crawford. In successive at bats, three for three against Halliday. CC now has three. The Rays five hits against the Toronto starter. High fly ball center field. Plenty deep for the Rays' first run of the game. Vernon Wells waits. He probably won't even bother throwing it in other than just to get the ball back to the infield. Sacrifice fly by Longoria. Crawford scores the race first run. It's now 5-1. to one. So Longoria picks up his 86th RBI of the year. Second in the American League in that department. Crawford scores his team leading 74th run. Could have given Crawford a double and an error, but for now, we'll take that triple for the possibility of a cycle. Absolutely. 
There is CC. 26 career hits now against Halliday. He knows something the rest of the league doesn't know. Yeah. Three for three tonight. How about that? Crawford has 26 career hits against Tim Wakefield and now 26 career hits against Roy Halliday, the most of any pitchers in his career. And those are two pretty tough customers. Wakefield has owned the Rays over the years, and Halliday has owned the American League throughout his career. CC does his best against the elite. 2 0 the count to Ben Zobris. By the way, he does have two home runs off Halliday. So stay tuned. Inside 3 0. So the Rays have threatened a little bit in the third and the fourth, and now they finally break through here in the sixth with their first run. It's 5 1 Blue Jays. 3 0 pitch to Joe. Zobris taken all the way. That's a call strike. Ben has flied to center and popped up to third base. He was frustrated his last time up. At first and third, nobody out. Felt like he had a pitch to drive and popped it up. Foul out of play. It's three and two. Joe Madden said before the game he would like to give Ben Zobris the rest, and at times Jason Bartlett, but with a three-man bench, it becomes a lot more difficult to find spots. To give these guys breather. So there's still that ongoing discussion about eight pitchers and three bench players. It's probably going to be that way for a little while. At least. Zobris stays alive as he fouls one off his foot. A triple by Carl Crawford, a sacrifice fly by Evan Longoria. That combination scoring the Rays first and only run against Halliday. Now up to 84 pitches here in the sixth inning. Long at bats by Zobris and Bartlett helping to raise that pitch count in the sixth. 3 2 pitch, grounder right to the second baseman, Aaron Hill. He'll make the play for the final out. But the Rays do score their first run. One hit, nobody left on base. It's 5 1 Toronto after six. our wing and by Amscott you're okay with us seventh inning baseball 5-1 Toronto here's Dwayne once again all right Todd thank you very much as we go to the seventh Shields has settled in quite nicely down the middle part of this game a couple of mistakes early and is down 5-1 as we go to the seventh Rod Barajas the catcher takes the first pitch and it's high Shields has retired 11 straight. Wells had a one out single in the third. That's been it. Foul ball. Count goes to one and one. 
Shields now just over 90 pitches. Barajas, England, and Scudero to deal with here. Two balls and a strike. Barajas singled in the second inning and scored when they put two on the board on the double by England and a sacrifice fly by Scudero. That'll be high. Three and one. So it's getting a little late for the Rays as Shields now trying to hold this club right where they are. Give the Rays offense three more shots. 3 1 is lifted towards center. Upton is there waiting. One away, one out, base is empty, and let's check in with Whit Watson. Whit. Dwayne, while we have a chance, a reminder about Sunday's broadcast, a special Kids Sunday, as always. It'll be on Sister Network Sun Sports. We're going to teach the kids in the audience, and the adults for that matter, how to score a game. We've got special graphics lined up. We will also have a giant oversized scorecard out in center field, and a uh, special guest will be helping me teach the viewers how to keep score. If you've never done it before, we're going to try to keep it as simple as we can. It's a keeping score special on Sunday throughout the entire broadcast. Our race live pregame starts at 1 o'clock, game at 1.30, the finale here against Toronto, and that will be on Sun Sports. Dwayne? All right, Whit, that's going to be fun Sunday. There's strike two to Joe Inglet. And uh, Whit Watson will be here. He's going to have a giant score sheet out there in center field. And uh, I'm going to give away the surprise. His son, Zach, is going to be out there assisting him on Kids Sunday. The ground ball foul outside of first. You don't see as many people in the stands keeping score as you used to, but it, it's still a lot of fun. I think and people that are really into the game enjoy keeping score to kind of get even more a part of it too. Yeah, well, there's a lineup uh, sheet right there. I'm not sure it'll be as big as the one we just saw, <laughs> but it's still going to be pretty good size out there, and <laughs> yeah. that, that will be uh, fun and highly informative. Still two strikes to count to England, and uh, right uh, immediately following our telecast, you'll want to stay with us because it's inside the Rays, the latest edition. Uh, look behind the scenes and uh, what goes into managing this club featuring Joe Madden. Count still two strikes to England. And Joe is so great with access. He can he, you can ask him anything about any move or anything you want. He will give you exactly what he's thinking at every time. And there's always a lot of thought about what Joe Madden does. There's never whimsicals, never off the cuff. He's always put in a lot of research as to why he does certain things. Wave and a miss. England out on strikes. So strikeout here for Shields. Two outs in the inning. And Marco Scudero is going to be the hitter. Now this is not going to be one of Shields' best lines, certainly of this season or of his career. Five runs is a lot of runs for Shields anytime, but he has really been locked in with Zahn. First pitch to Scudero is skied to left. A lot of room for Crawford. Carl makes the catch and a good top half of the seventh. One, two, three. Go to the bottom. 5 1 Toronto.
AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Well, the Rays are down 5-1 to one as they come in to hit in the bottom of the seventh inning, sending Carlos Peña to lead it off. Pitch down around his ankles. A ball and no strikes. Carlos hit a fly ball to center in the second. He actually came close to hitting that one out, but was under it. And as it turns out, Wells had a lot of room in center. And Halliday struck him out. He keeps this pitch in, and Carlos misses it. So Pena struck out on a breaking ball in the fourth, and now it's a 1-1 count here in the seventh inning. The pitch is fouled, big cut, one and two. Well, they've changed the triple for Crawford into a double, and they've charged England with an error Allowing Carl to go to third. Well, there goes his shot at the cycle, unless we go, he gets two more bats, but that's too bad. But I think it is the right call. And it makes the run unearned. One and two, the count to Pena. Oh, strike three call, a fastball over the inside corner. Daryl Cousins on the call, third strike. Here's another look. Halliday has pitched Pena so tough his last two times up. That's got a little bit of the plate there, I'm afraid, Carlos. It's just they've been working him in, 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 and Halliday just puts one right on the perfect spot there on the inside corner. You know, Todd, we've seen Halliday make two, I mean, great pitches in the last two innings. That one to Carlos, I mean, it's almost unhittable. And the one to Bartlett absolutely was unhittable. As Willie Ibar now pitch hits for Burrell. And the first pitch to him is a fastball for a strike. When I mean, a guy makes pitches like that, you just got to tip your cap. Halliday's that good. One and one. And it's no mistake that he's as good as he is. He has, if not the best, among the, the best work ethic mm -hmm. of any pitcher in baseball. Ground ball right side. This is Hill taking care of that one. Two up, two down, two quick outs in the seventh. For all the latest updates on the Rays, log on to TampaBay.com from the Diamond of the Clubhouse and everywhere in between. You'll get in-depth news, stories, and scores 24 hours a day only at TampaBay.com. Two up, two down. It's two outs into the seventh inning is pitch count right now just a little over 90 and he'd go 115 117 119 pitches so he could easily see his way to the finish line tonight if he wants there's a strike to gross he's got all that physical ability he talked about his work ethic he also has added that mental aspect of the game where he is a big disciple of a guy who used to be on the the Devil Ray staff back in the day, Harvey Dorfman, part of Larry Rothschild staff, and he's really studied a lot of Harvey's books. Pop up, foul ball, third base side. Encarnacion is there to make the catch, and that retires the side. A one, two, three, seven. We go to the eighth, five, one, Toronto.
Five to one. We go to the eighth inning. Time for the stay in the game hold of the day. Brought to you by Just for Men Hair Color. Look into the Rays bullpen. Grant Balfour and Dan Wheeler with 12 to lead the way. Little relievers keep their teams in the game, and you too can stay in the game with Just for Men Hair Color. Eighth inning underway. The first pitch to Aaron Hill is a strike. Hill 0 for 3 and a tapper back to the mound. A little toss to first. He's out of there. Well, how about this now for Shields after giving up five runs in three innings? He's now retired 15 in a row. I just think this is a huge stepping stone for Shields together with Zahn. Obviously, they struggled early, and Shields missed some location on pitches. But in Seattle, Shields shook Zahn off. 15, 20 times tonight since the third inning. I've seen him shake him maybe three, four times. There's a strike to Lynn. They're just in a great rhythm together mentally, and Shields is in a tempo that he's just getting the ball, getting the sign, and going. And that's where Zod would love to get all of the starters just in that comfort zone where all they have to do is execute and throw the pitch to his mitt. And boy, if they can do that, that's a big step in the right direction. But I'll tell you something, Zahn, before he came over here, was really impressed, as a lot of people have been, with the Rays pitching staff. And since he's been here, there's another out. As Lynn strikes out for the second straight time, 16 in a row, retired now. Here's the strikeout pitch. 0 oh, 2 changeup. The big weapon for Shields. He did shake off Zahn on the 0 1 pitch and went to a curveball. But other than that, that maybe was the fourth time since the third inning he has shaken to another pitch. Shields is just getting the sign and going for the most part. Zahn's obviously thinking along the lines that James likes. Two outs in the eighth. The round ball headed up the middle, and that ball somehow skips beneath and in between the body and the glove of Bartlett. And it goes through into center for a base hit. I think Jason had this ball get in a little closer to him than he thought. He almost didn't have to slide for this ball as he had that ball go in between his glove and his body. I think he kind of just kind of misjudged it there a little bit. He may have had a shot at overbait too if he picks that cleanly or if he slides and pops right back up, but it got in between himself and the glove. So that stops the string of 16 in a row retired by Shields. Overbay's at first, and Vernon Wells is the hitter. The pitch inside, 1 and 0. And boy, you're right. You know, you look back at the uh, at the runs the Jays have scored, including the first one. Of Overbay hit that two-run home run. It just a cut fastball that just came stayed right out over the plate. Didn't get in at all. So location, and when Lynn hit the home run, another one. Two and zero. Oh. Other than that, it's been a great night for Shields. But the Rays are down five to one. They've been out hit eight to five. Now the count to Wells is three and zero. Oh. But back to the pitching staff and Zahn, since he's been here in just a handful of days, he appreciates this pitching staff even more. He thinks it really is something special. High fly ball back to the left field with some carry. Crawford just not quite to the track. Makes the catch to retire the side. No runs, a man left. Bottom of the eighth coming, 5-1 Toronto.
Stepped and in from center field. He makes the catch on the cross through Coors Light freeze cam. He got a great break on that line drive off the bat of Scudero to make that play. It'll be sound Upton and Bartlett for the Rays in the bottom of the eighth. Getting late, Rays down by four, and Zahn checks on a pitch that drops low. Greg Zahn has been hit by a pitch in the right hand and has struck out swinging. Two and up. Takes one at the knees. Now two and one. There's a shot deep down the right field line. Mike go hits the foul pole. That's a home run. Greg Zahn hits a home run on a two-one pitch. That's going to make it five to two. Zahn pulled it right down the line and hit the screening next to the foul pole. His fifth home run of the year. And the Rays now trail by three. Zahn got a pitch on the inner half down low at the knees. He went and got it and hit it. He was just hoping it would stay fair. It was hooking and it caught a part of the screen right there. His first home run as a member of the Tampa Bay Rays. Here's V.J. Upton. And he shoots a base hit the other way. A single in the right. So the Rays offense showing some signs here in the bottom of the eighth inning of coming to life. Great approach there by Upton. Joe Madden talked to him in Anaheim about just thinking about going back through the middle. That time he had an outside pitch and just sent it into right field. Couple of hits tonight for BJ Upton. We'll see if he can turn things around in this homestand. Another look at Upton taking a pitch that was away a little bit. It had the plate, but just that nice little serve in the right field line drive base hit. Well, that could be great advice for him because contact has been an issue. Just make contact. With his speed, lots of things can happen. Now the pitch to Bartlett. That's a strike. That's Jason Frazier in the bullpen for the Blue Jays. Jason Bartlett at the plate for the Rays. There goes Upton. The pitch is outside and the throw in time. Upton is caught stealing as Hill puts the tag on him. Barajas, who earlier threw out Crawford back in the first, throws out Upton here in the eighth inning. Well, Joe Madden said he wanted his team to be aggressive, but when you're down three, you got to have a pretty good idea you can get that bag, especially with nobody out in the inning and some momentum going in your favor. Not a great jump for B.J. Upton, and Barajas has made two great throws tonight, getting Crawford and Upton. Five ball center field. Wells is there. He'll make the catch on this one. And Bartlett is the second out. Two gone. Here's Carl Crawford. In that point, you have six outs to work with. You're trying to get aggressive against Halliday, but. All the momentum's in your favor. It's a tough spot to go unless you feel like you can get a get a great jump. Crawford fouls a fastball back, strike one. Halliday may have thrown his best fastball of the night right there. He's a little over a hundred pitches, and that one was about ninety-four. I think he's tired of Crawford getting his base hits. <laughs> I think so. You're right about the attempted steal. Well, you really have to save these outs. And now the Rays are down to four outs. Spell the other way.
Crawford hitting 316 for the year. And he stays alive, battling this one away. Crawford with a pair of two base hits are checkers double of the game in this case the doubles of the game double in the fourth and a double in the sixth originally scored a triple but later England was given an error for the bobble he made in right so it's a double for Crawford down and in he checked on the appeal Bill Miller says he held up and the count is two and two I think if you asked Halliday who the toughest hitter he has to face in the American League. If Crawford's not at the top of his list, it's pretty close. He just always seems to be in battles with Carl Crawford throughout his career, and Crawford's done a nice job against him tonight. Well, Halliday, eight and five lifetime against the Rays here at Tropicana Field. He's 11 and nine for his career against the Rays. And a hot shot skips past. Hill into short right field and Carl hits the ball hard again off Halliday and he is aboard. You oh, see, I don't know. I'd be inclined to say too hot to handle. <laughs> oh, that's got to be a base hit. You'd see a list of hitters with four hits in one game against Roy Halliday. I promise you it's a short list. And now Carl Crawford's on that list as he has hit bullets tonight. The only ball he didn't smoke was that chopper he hit the first time up, but it was in the hole between short and third with his speed. It was a base hit. Crawford just somehow figures out a way against Halliday. So a base hit for Crawford, the eighth hit for the Rays, and Carl has half of the hits. A run in, runner at first, two outs, and here's Evan Longoria. Pitch away. One ball, no strikes. This one drops in a breaking ball for strike one. Raise live the post game comes up immediately following the coverage of our game. And then inside the Rays, a look behind the scenes at managing the Rays. Tap to third, Encarnacion to Hill for the force, and that retires the side. The Rays settled for the one run on the home run by Zahn through 8 5 2 Toronto. Five two, we go to the ninth inning, and the Rays have made the call to the bullpen. Brought to you by Metro 
PCS unlimit yourself. Russ Springer is going to take over. You see number 36. That's a change of number for Springer. Randy Choate had that number and Springer's had that for a long time. And so today they switch numbers. Just switched numbers or was no. Uh, that was it. No other transaction. No case of beer. No. No. Well, I'm, I'm sure there will be some some act of kindness bestowed <laughs> by Springer. But Choate from the beginning was thinking, well, I should give him my number. And they did. He's number 36 now. Swing and a miss here by Randy Ruiz. The ninth inning is underway. Shields finished this game by retiring 17 of the last 18 men he faced. There's Randy Choate. Nice gesture. One hopper to short. Bartlett's right there in the throw to first in time. One away in the ninth. Sign up at Kane's Furniture for a chance. To meet one of your favorite Rays players, and if the Rays come up with 10 strikeouts in a game at home, log on to canestrikeout.com to print a voucher. They can be redeemed at Canes for free Papa John's pizza. Get the Canes today. Edwin Encarnacion. Pitch is high right now. The pitching lines for Roy Halliday and Jane Shields. So very similar, except in the run department. They each have worked eight innings. They each have given up eight hits. Shields finished with seven strikeouts. Halliday has six. Neither has given up a walk. Two home runs allowed by Shields, one by Halliday. Two runs by Halliday and five by Shields. And each has made 111 pitches through eight. Springer in relief of Shields throws a strike. The count is one and two. It looks like Halliday may be done. They continue to have open action here in the top half of the inning. Too deep to center. Upton coming in. BJ makes the catch. Two outs, two up, two down. Based on the fact that Halliday was smiling, you would think he's out of the game because that's not his normal game face. <laughs> Rays Summer Concert Series tomorrow, presented by Hess Express. After the game, when the Rays and the Blue Jays are finished on Sci Fi Night, the B 52s perform the free post game concert. Visit RaysBaseball.com to get your tickets. Here's the catcher, Rod Barajas. It's down. The ball, no strikes. Breaking ball to start him. Springer in his 17th big league season. 40 years old. The Rays is 19. Most recently with Oakland before coming to the Rays. And that's down. So he and Joe just flipped numbers. Joe's now 37. That's it, I think. Wow. Yeah. Busy time lately for the equipment managers. <laughs> yes, it is. New players, changing numbers. Yeah. And that. Uh, the uh, catching headgear for Azan <laughs> we've mentioned already. And the, the mask part, the cage part, was changed by Westy. And it's that dark blue now, which Zahn prefers over the metallic color. He just likes the, the darker guard. It's fouled back. Two and two. Rays in the bottom of the ninth will have Zobris Pena and then Ibar who pinch hit in the seventh inning. Ibar do up.
2 2. Oh, he tried to shoot the outside corner with a fastball. Just missed. Let's take another look at that one. It appeared to be a little wide. I think it's a good call here. Missed the outside corner barely. Joe Cousins has done a pretty good job on the plate tonight. Yeah, he rang Burl up on a pitch that was probably wide in the second. That's the only break he's given a pitcher tonight. That's foul. And that one from Springer didn't miss by very much. That we said at the outset, Daryl Cousins makes you throw a strike. And that pitch to Burl had some nasty bite to it. Halliday really broke off a great slider there that had a lot of cut across the plate. Three two. Pop foul. That's headed back and will be out of play. So we'll see another 3 2 pitch. Did that hit Spanish radio? Split the uh, English radio boys. Oh, did it? Yeah, right in between them. Actually, it looked like their intern was uh, taking care of the matter. Swing and a miss. Barajas is out on strikes. We go to the bottom of the ninth. It's 5 2 Toronto. Halliday, typical Roy Halliday tonight. Eight innings, he made 111 pitches. He struck out six, did not walk a batter. Gave up two runs, one earned on eight hits. Gave up the home run to Greg Zahn. Otherwise, was pretty much in control. He also hit Zahn with the pitch. And gives way to Jason Frazier. As the Rays will send Ben Zobras up there to lead off against the right-hander. Jason Frazier appearing in his 46th game, 6-2, and two, an ERA below two. He has been lights out against righties, but he's going to face a bunch of lefties here for the Rays. Frazier, fastball, very good slider, change up, which has got a bit of a splitter action. And again, he can just dominate righties, but with the Rays lefty hitters and switch hitters, he's not going to face one for a while. So it's Zobris looking for his first hit of the night. Stepping in against Frazier. The pitch is inside one and all. So 46 the parents for Frazier. He's given up runs in only five of 45 performances this year. There's ball two, two and oh. The lefties are hitting 264 against him. Whereas righties, he's held to a 139 average. So, a good spot here in the Rays lineup if they can try and rally here in the ninth. That's 
It's a strike. Just picked up the edge. That was pretty close out there. Two and one. So he's in relief of Halliday. And the fastball is fouled. Two and two. Last appearance for Frazier was four days ago against the Yankees when he picked up his fifth save of the year. A one inning save gave up a hit picked up a strikeout. Two and two. Zobris pops it up. Left side in Carnacion, the third baseman, grabs it. That is out number one. So that's the first out here in the ninth inning. Now Carlos Pena. And I tell you, I really think, and you mentioned it earlier about Joe Madden looking for a place to give Zobris a little breather. And of course, on the day off yesterday after that long trip back from the West Coast, but he really tonight on a couple of pitches looked as if he could use it. Yeah, I think Joe's aware of that too. He's just trying to figure it out with a three man bench. Big cut there by Pena. I mean, Zobris has been so good all year. Yep. And it's, you know, what he's showing is he, he's he's human. <laughs> he's been great. He's hustled every every play, and just a couple pitches tonight where you can see what Madden's thinking about. And Ben's, you know, never been in this position for a while where he's played this many games in one season. Yeah, I thought that last pitch that he popped up from Frazier was one of those pitches. And that's when Joe says he can tell when he's fatigued, when he's starting to leave the zone a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's a fly ball into right field. England comes in and makes the catch. And that's the second out. Two gone. Well, game two of the series in the homestand tomorrow. We'll be with you at 6.30 tomorrow night. Scott Casmere and Brian Tallett, the pitching matchup on Fox Sports Florida. Game two of the series. Post game comes up immediately following this one. And then inside the Rays. A behind the scenes look at managing. Talked about Daryl Cousins behind the plate. Not sure if he's had many games that he's called without a walk. We're not that far away right now. Well, here's Ibar. And a line drive base hit into center. This game is still alive. As Ibar makes the turn and holds. First pitch fastball, and Willie was right on it, shooting it back into center. And the Rays have their ninth hit. Joe gave Willie Ibar a chance at some extended playing time on the road trip, giving him a few starts in Seattle and Anaheim. Unfortunately, Willie. Didn't have his best trip, but here he is. I think he's a seventh inning and on guy. He seems to have his best at bats late in the game. Now Gabe Gross. Rays need at least another runner to have a chance to keep it going. It's too high. One ball, no strikes. Boston and Texas now tied. That's a 2 2 ball game. They're in the top of the sixth inning. That's a strike. One and one. Bottom of the ninth, 
High bar at first, two outs. One ball, two strikes. Twenty one thousand five hundred twenty two here tonight. And the Rays are down to their final out. Bottom of the ninth with Gross behind in the count one and two. And that pitch was very, very close for ball two. But Darryl Cousins, a man of his own convictions. A little high, maybe. Oh, didn't have the plate either. Yep. All right. Good night. Don't take too many more of those though with two strikes. <laughs> it's a little dangerous. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. A fastball by him. And that ends this game. So the Blue Jays hand the Rays a tough loss tonight. It's a 5-2 to two contest. We'll be back in a moment.